Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look and fixing the strongest build by Dom's Drum Table. Now, my build is not the strongest build, however, it is in the same vein as his. It is thematically the same, which apparently some people don't like me changing the theme of the build. So here you go. For anyone who hasn't been formally introduced, I'd like to present to you my masterpiece, the absolute powerhouse. This is the most powerful build I have ever seen in this game. It is insanely simple and easy to replicate. The primary aspect of this build is of course dual wielding two great stars. Power stancing these devastatingly powerful great hammers is all you need to absolutely rule this game. You want to get yourself up to 60 strength as quick as possible because that is the soft cap. Then you want to make sure you have a nice amount of points in Vigor so that you have plenty of health and a decent amount in Endurance as well because these are very heavy weapons and you want to make sure you've got at least a half decent armor set on. By no means do you need to get your strength to 99 but I had nothing else to do with my stat points. Okay so the final soft cap for strength is going to be 80. 60 is that middle soft cap for strength. Why he's mentioning it here as like the definitive soft cap, I'm not really sure. Once you hit past that, it's probably worth investing in other stats. Which he did. He has 70 vigor. That's not good. This vigor soft cap is 60, and going from 60 to 99 only nets you 300 more HP. You really shouldn't go past 60 vigor. 42 endurance is also very interesting. You would probably be better off investing those wasted points in strength, endurance, and vigor, and putting them into arcane, perhaps, to have more bleed buildup, and you can go with the occult infusion or the blood infusion, whichever is better. He doesn't even mention that the bigger soft cap is 60. He just says, oh, you should get some vigor. That's meaningless. If you're following a guide, what is a decent amount of vigor? You see a 70, but is that a decent amount of vigor? He doesn't say. My absolute personal favorite and the one I recommend you never take off is the Stone Barb Cracked tier. That is going to make enemies' stances break even easier and you will be staggering enemies almost in one hit. The second one is very interchangeable, and at low levels, I actually really advise the Strength Knot tier, because that will give you an artificial plus 10 strength for 3 minutes, which is going to make you deal insane amounts of damage, even at very low levels. His build is quite interesting. I would kind of put it in the same vein as a Giant Crusher build, in which it's just outclassed by the Rusted Anchor, however it has some niche uses such as the Drying Crusher being better for poise damage. Great Stars has bleed and some HP regen. The problem with that is it's always going to be out damaged by the Rusted Anchor. So there's really not a point in optimizing for it because the niche is so niche that it's not worth investing into. The small regen that you get doesn't matter because you have worse damage than Rusted Anchor if you can properly use the Rusted Anchor and get the counter hits. And it's the same thing for the Giant Crusher. The Giant Crusher has worse damage than the Rusted Anchor if you can get the counter hits. You should be able to get the counter hits since the bosses have such long recovery times. Alright, so here's my build. Obviously we're level 179 because that's the level he was. We started as the Vagabond, you could also start as the Hero, you're going to end up at the same level, however the Vagabond has a little bit more mind. That's really the only difference. Uh, we have 60 Vigor because that's the Vigor soft cap. As I already said, it's not worth going past 60 Vigor. We have 29 Endurance, that is to get 51 Poise, as well as use the Rusted Anchors without fat rolling. We have 72 Strength boosted to 82 with all of our buffs. That's past the strength soft cap. However, we literally have nothing else to invest in that would provide a meaningful increase in damage or survivability. We have 62 dexterity boosted to 80 with all of our buffs, and that's going to be the dexterity soft cap as well. For weapons, we have the quality rusted anchors, and I did not use any ashes of war, just like Dom's round table. 
However, if you're going to use an Ash of War, I would highly recommend using Royal Knight's Resolve, as that buffs your damage by 80%. For armor, we have the Okina Mask, the Raptor's Black Feathers for the jumping attack boost, Crucible Gauntlets and Tree Sentinel's Greaves. That's going to get us to 51 poise, that is the PvE poise breakpoint. For Talismans, we have the Spear Talisman, which is going to boost our counter damage, the Claw Talisman, which is also going to boost our jumping attack damage, like the Raptor's Black Feathers, Millicent's Prosthesis, which will give us more dexterity, as well as increase our consecutive hits. And then we have the Urtree's Favor to give us a little bit more wiggle room on equip load, as well as give us more HP and stamina. For the Great Rune, we have Verdon's Great Rune for the additional HP, FP, and stamina. And for the Crystal Tears, we have the Strength Knot Crystal Tear and the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tear to reach the soft caps of 80 for Strength and Dexterity.